As we know, across the telecom industry, geography plays a crucial part for analytics workflows, ranging from capacity forecasting to site selection. Adopting a geospatial approach is the best way for users to understand behavior, measure change, determine relations, find locations, detect trends and patterns, and make predictions. However, aside from being spatial, telecom data is also a form of big data, where high volume and high velocity inputs are continuously used to derive insights and drive decision making. As analysts, we often have to deal with data such as call detail records or telemetry data that are either streamed or collected over long periods with high spatiotemporal granularity. Typically, this amount of data requires the use of a big data analytics platform based on technologies such as Hive or Spark and open source tools to perform spatial operations. But the performance of these tools tend to be slow, the types of operations limited, and sometimes these tools require preparation steps such as building out a spatial index, which can take a long time and requires your data set to be in a certain format and location. And there's no guarantee that you can process them at scale, so you would have to divide them into multiple smaller geographical regions. So the whole experience tends to be very painful. We recognize that many of our clients already have their own big data cluster or platform, either on-prem or in the cloud. And so what ArcGIS offers is a flexible way to deploy spatial analytics within your existing big data analytics platform. This is especially helpful for data scientists wanting to employ spatial operations as part of their workflow. One such solution is the Big Data Toolkit, or BDT. What it is, is an Esri Professional Services solution that is based off Apache Spark. It is a set of libraries that run on top of your big data cluster. BDT is capable of reading and writing to our datasets directly, whether they're stored in your cluster or somewhere else, like an S3 bucket or Azure blob storage there is no need to move your data around. And unlike other spatial tools out there, BDT supports a variety of file formats, such as shapefiles, CSVs, Parquet, and so on, and does not require you to build out a spatial index first. With this in mind, let me walk you through an example. We have made use of a publicly available call detail records dataset collected from the city of Milan. These are 900 million records of data that have been pre-aggregated into spatial bins, each about 200 by 200 meters. There are 100 by 100 such grid cells, making up 10,000 spatial bins. Within each spatial bin, a call detail record contains information about the number of incoming and outgoing calls, text messages, and internet connections. These are values averaged within intervals of 15 minutes. We also have access to local cell sites. These are either 5G, LTE, UMTS, or GSM cell sites, each with a predefined effective radius. The question is, can we make use of the spatial patterns of call records and our knowledge of the location of cell sites to figure out which regions are either under or over capacity? To do this, we have to first perform a join so each call detail record is associated with a particular spatial bin. We can then create different temporal resolutions for our data every three hours, every day, and every week. This is so that we can better recognize both short and long-term usage patterns. We can then aggregate our data, counting up the number of times each activity is observed per location, per time. For our cell sites data set, we are reading in point features and then projecting them to the spatial coordinate system that we want. This is an operation that can be very difficult using third-party tools, but is so simple with BDT because we are utilizing the RGS projection engine under the hood. For each of these points, we are then creating a coverage buffer according to the type of cell site. We're then using point and polygons to enrich the call detail records with attributes from these buffers. In the end, this allows us to derive our relative carrying capacity based off the amount of mobile usage and the number of overlapping cell sites in any given region at a particular point in time. This is what that process looks like in a big data analytics platform. Here I have my Azure Databricks instance, which is sitting on top of a Spark cluster. If we take a look at that cluster, we see that there is the option to employ additional nodes 
or more powerful VMs depending on the amount of data and workload. To install BDT, it's a straightforward drag and draw process. Afterward, we will have access to all the spatial operations within Databricks, which provides analysts a notebook-like experience. The first step of our notebook is to load the input data, which consists of 20 gigs worth of call detail records and CSV files stored in an Azure Blob storage account. Using BDT is as simple as calling the relevant libraries and performing the spatial operations we just talked about, such as projections, buffers, joins, and more advanced functions, such as hotspot analysis or geographically weighted regression. It takes less than a minute to process 900 million records. Finally, these results can be saved to a number of formats, such as Parquet, Shapefiles, or Enterprise GeoDatabase. We can also save them to a SQL Server for downstream analysis and visualization in either RGS Pro, our desktop solution, or RGS Insights. The straightforward way in which spatial operations can be performed on top of an existing big data platform means that spatial analysis is no longer reserved for GIS analysts. With the help of ArcGIS, spatial data science can now be easily performed by anyone without disrupting their existing workflows or data pipelines.